Okay, so don't be intimidated by this math problem. As long as you have basic math skills, you'll be able to figure out the right answer. But of course, this does look very complicated because this symbol right here um, is uh, pretty mysterious looking, especially if you've never seen it before. But what do you think this could possibly mean? So we have this symbol. Now, I'm not going to tell you what this means right now, but uh, we have this symbol. N is equal to 1. We have a 3 up here, and then we have N squared. Well, the correct answer is one of these answers right here. So let's go ahead and take a look at our options. So A is 3, B is 9, C is 14, and D is 20. All right, so no need to use your calculator, so put that away. But if you have the answer, and uh, feel free to take a guess, just kind of look at this thing. What do you think could possibly be the answer? Again, it's one of these numbers right here. Put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to explain this very important math symbol, and uh, we'll walk through uh, the solution to this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, now we have this mysterious-looking symbol, uh, you know, and of course, you know, this looks pretty scary. You might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, uh, you know, there's no way I can uh, figure this out. This is way, you know, uh, more advanced than all the math that I ever took. Well, yes, you may not have studied this, but what do you think this possibly could mean? Okay, what do you think is the right answer? Well, hopefully you played around with this number, this number, and uh, this n squared. Uh, we have n is equal to 1, so, you know, maybe we plug in at 1 and we square it, and then maybe we plug in at 3 and we square it, something like that. Well, if you played around with this enough, hopefully you came up with the correct answer, uh, correct answer, which is C, and, of course, that is 14. Now, even if you uh, don't understand the problem, the math, but you got the answer right, well, that is fantastic, and you certainly uh, deserve a happy face and an A+. Plus. But uh, this concept here, what we're going to be talking about in just one second is something that you would see in like a second year algebra course, like Algebra 2 or College Algebra, certainly pre-calculus. And you will uh, basically start studying this symbol and what it means, its implications, when you study a topic called sequence and series in mathematics. But uh, I'm going to break this down in a super easy kind of um, basic way so all of you out there uh, can understand. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into it right now. So here is our problem, and hopefully you took some sort of guess. You're like, I don't know what's going on here, Mr. YouTube Math Man. Well, just take a guess. So if n is equal to 1, all right, so we have an n squared. Well, if n is 1, that would be what? 1 squared. So maybe the answer is 1. But we also have a 3 up here, so we don't see 1 as an option. But we do have 3, so maybe it's 3, but would it be like 3 squared? Well, that would be 9. Okay, so that's, a you know, 9 is certainly a better choice than 3. Unfortunately, both of these answers are wrong. But here's the thing. As long as you took a guess, I am perfectly happy, right? So anytime you don't understand a math question, especially a multiple choice question, yes, indeed, please take a guess. There's very few uh, times where you don't want to uh, take a guess. But of course, if we didn't have a multiple choice question here, we would just have to know the math. Okay, so what is this symbol? Well, let's go ahead and talk about that right now. So this symbol is called sigma, okay? It's what we call the summation uh, notation, okay? So this is a notation. This means something in mathematics. But sigma is, um, uh, it, this is the symbol in the Greek alphabet, right? It's called sigma, okay? But you want to think of the word sum, okay, or summation. So how does this symbol work? Well, let's go ahead and talk about that right now. But before I do that, let me go ahead and just get back to the sequence and series business. I did mention that this is relevant uh, to those of you out there that have studied sequence and series. Now, what is a sequence in math? Well, a sequence would be like a sequence of numbers, uh, like 1, 2, 3, and 4. This is a sequence. Now, if we add up the terms in a sequence, like 1 plus 2 plus 3, plus four, this is a series, okay? So what we're talking about here 
uh, this summation or sigma notation is relevant when it, uh, you study series, which is a very, very important topic in mathematics. Matter of fact, this symbol, okay, this summation uh, symbol or this sigma uh, notation is very relevant to calculus. It's very relevant to this symbol right here called a, uh, an elongated S, right? So you might be familiar with uh, calculus or at least the way it uh, looks. This is what we call an integral. This also means sum, okay? But it's a little bit different than this symbol. So if you're interested in calculus and some of the notation that goes with it, well, you need to be familiar with the sigma notation. But uh, the great thing is, is that this is a very easy notation to understand. Okay, so let's go and get into it right now. So here is our problem. So let's just get some basic terminology down. So we have this symbol, okay, this uh, sigma notation, the summation here, and there's a couple aspects to it. So this bottom number down here is called the lower limit of summation. We'll just call it the lower limit. And then up here, this number is the upper limit. Okay, so what does that mean though? Well, we um, need to kind of discuss um, uh, this uh, sigma symbol a little bit more in detail and uh, we're going to do that right now. Okay, so let's talk about these lower limits and this upper limit. So here, this is n is equal to 1. Okay, so we're going to start off with n is equal to 1 and we have an n squared here. So it looks like we're probably going to replace this n squared, this n, with 1. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Then we're going to index, all right? So the way the summation notation works is that we index, we kind of go up a notch, and we go to n is equal to 2, okay? So we're going to go to n is equal to 2, and we're going to do the same thing. But we're going to be adding, okay? So we're going to take this and find the results of it, and then we're going to index up to n is equal to 2, and then we're going to add the results to n is equal to 2, and then we're going to index up until n is equal to 3, and then we're going to stop. All right, so this is the way uh, the summation notation works. Now, remember, math is a language, and once you understand the language, well, then, the, you know, the actual mathematics, the actual number crunching isn't that bad. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, kind of look at uh, what I just told you in this manner. So we have uh, n is equal to 1, the summation of uh, n is equal to 1, 2, 3, n squared. So that means that we're going to start at 1. Okay, so we're going to place this n with 1, and then we're going to index to n is equal to 2. We're going to plug in for n that 2, and then we're going to add n is equal to 3. Okay, where well, n is equal to 3 because we're going to stop right there. So this is kind of like our starting point, and this is our stopping point, and we're going to add all this up because that's what the sigma notation is. It's the summation notation. Okay, so let's go to take the next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, I definitely need your help to continue to grow my channel. Now, I've been on YouTube for uh, some uh, good period of time. Matter of fact, I think I started my channel way back in 2008, but I really didn't do much with the channel. I posted a video here and there, but about six, seven years ago, I really started putting more effort into my channel, and the results kind of did this. Now, that's a good lesson learned or a good reminder for myself and for you, and that is if you really want to improve in something, okay, if you really want to get great results, you have to be consistent. You have to put a lot of work and effort in over a long period of time. So uh, learning math is no different. Okay, if you want to learn mathematics, you got to put in, in a lot of sustained, consistent effort. And of course, you're going to just have to be patient because there is a lot to learn. All right, so if you're trying to learn math, you know, especially advanced math, really quick and really fast, well, you might learn a little bit, but you're certainly not going to really comprehend mathematics. And I got to be a truth teller here because everyone, well, not everyone, but a lot of people are looking for quick fixes when it comes to math. They're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, uh, you know, just teach me, uh, you know, calculus in five days. That's all the time I have for it. Well, you know, I can maybe give you a basic sense of what calculus is about, but I can't teach you it in five days, right? So if you truly want to learn math, you got to be patient. But uh, even more importantly, you need to have clear and understandable, you know, kind of simple to understand math instruction. And that's what my channel is all about. I try to make math clear and understandable and interesting, all right? But I need your support to reach as many people as possible. And the best way to support this channel is to hit that subscribe button. And if you're going to do that, hit that bell notification as well so you can get my latest videos. 
Now, if you want to learn more about this sigma uh, notation and sequence and series, check out my full main math courses. I'm going to leave links to those in the description of this video. And you may want to check out like my Algebra 2 course, but really check out like my pre-calculus course, right? Really get into, you know, the, not only the sigma notation, but uh, all the different things you need to understand about sequence and series, right? This is an extremely important topic, especially in preparation to understand calculus. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish up this problem because all we have to do is uh, basically just some number crunching. And that's why I told you to put away your calculator because uh, here we have n squared. We're first going to let n is equal to one. Okay, so we're gonna replace this uh, n with a one. We're gonna square it. And then we're gonna let n is equal to two. So I'll replace this n with a two, we'll square it. And then we'll replace, uh, replace this n with a three and we'll square it. And then we'll add up all the terms here. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So basically, here is what this sigma notation means, right? So uh, we're gonna add up the sum of n is equal to one, two, three, and squared, right? So uh, we, we start off with one squared plus two squared plus three squared. So now, uh, you know, we're just talking about basic math, right? So one squared is one times one, which of course is one. Two squared is two times two, that's four. Three squared is three times three, that's nine. One plus four plus nine, is 14. Okay, so what is the big idea in this video? Well, I would say uh, obviously one of the big ideas is an introduction to uh, the summation or sigma notation in mathematics. But I think there's a bigger uh, kind of message here, and that is, you know, math is a language, okay? So if you're like, oh, this is just too hard for me, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I'll never be able to understand it. Well, you know, it's just like any kind of foreign language. You know, if you don't understand what's, you know, what you're hearing, well, of course, it's going to seem very difficult because it is. But you can learn the language of math, and you're just going to have to learn it one word, one noun, one verb at a time or you know one concept or one math skill at a time okay so hopefully this video helped you out and if that's the case don't forget to like and subscribe and with that being said i definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures thank you for your time and have a great day